Hi, this is Linda and Aaron with Traveling Flamingo. Dining is a big part of the cruising experience and each cruise line does it differently. We get lots of questions about dress code and what to expect. We're going to tell you everything you need to know about Royal Caribbean's main dining room so you can be prepared for your cruise. All that and more coming right up. and I are all about trying the food that's included in the price before we start paying for specialty dining. Although I do personally like all the specialty dining usually. The main dining room is included in your cruise fare and is open for breakfast, lunches, and dinner. We've broken our video into seven sections to help you answer all of your questions. We go over atmosphere, location, dining times, menu, dress code, tips, and our overall thought. Let's jump into the atmosphere of the main dining room. And in our experience, it can depend on the ship you're on. The largest MDR we've seen was on the Allure of the Seas and it was three floors tall. There was a massive chandelier in the middle and lots of artwork all around the dining room. On the larger ships with dining rooms so big, you might not have great views out of the windows, but if you go for breakfast or lunch, it's often quieter and you get to try sitting in different locations. You could actually sit in a different area every day and so it has a more quiet and relaxed vibe. Royal Caribbean has changed it up how they do the MDR on the Quantum class of ships. Instead of one massive MDR, there are four smaller ones with their own theming and menu options. This is nice when you're on a longer cruise as each restaurant has its own theming. This is similar how, to how celebrities doing it with their new Edge class and how NCL did it with the breakaway. In general, the atmosphere of the MDR feels like a cross between eating at a nice restaurant and a banquet room. Depending on the time of day and location, it can be pretty loud in there. Before we get into dining times and the menu, I just want to pop in here and thank everyone who's liked and subscribed to our channel and say we've got tons of cruising videos including what's free on Royal Caribbean, ship tours including an Odyssey of the Seas room tour, and what you need to know for a perfect day at Coco Cay. So when this video is done, please be sure to check out our channel. Thank you. I like the idea of having the small dining rooms with some different menu offerings. It changes it up a bit and gives you more of an intimate feeling. So in terms of the location, for the main dining room, they're typically at the back of the ship, lo lower down on decks three and four. One thing we like doing is going down when the seas are a little rougher because you get a great views of how the big the waves are. Breakfast and lunch is usually quieter and you could request a seat at the window. For dinner, where you sit will depend on if you're traditional dining or my time dining. Usually, a floor of the dining room is set aside for traditional dining and you will be either the first or second seated. You will be assigned the same table, table mates, and server for each dinner. If you're not happy with your table for whatever reason, maybe you don't mesh with your table mates, you could ask to be moved to a different table. For my time dining, you will not have a set dining time. Every night instead, you will either make a reservation or show up and wait for an available table. We usually try to make a reservation to avoid waiting, and when we have made our reservations, we got the same server. This allows for flexibility, especially around excursions, and if you're a smaller group, you are less likely to be seated with other guests. On to the menu, and as we stated earlier, they are open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. For breakfast, you can expect typical American breakfast with eggs, breakfast meats, pancakes, as well as some lighter options like fresh fruit and yogurt. The m lunch menu, they have options like Caesar salad, lentil soup, grilled chicken quesadilla, royal chicken sandwich, and of course, desserts like white chocolate mousse, ice cream, and fruit. For dinner, it is also a three-course menu. There are classics which are available every night and then a rotations of options that are different each night. We're going to share with you some of the menu items from our sailing. Keep in mind it might be different on your sailing, but they do try to include local flavors which is great. On our sailing for appetizers, they usually would have Caesar salad, arsenal cheese plate, and shrimp cocktail. Some of the classic mains include roast chicken breast and spaghetti bolognese. You can also expect to see rotating menu items like prime rib and fried chicken. The classic desserts that they included are creme brulee, apple blossom a la mode, and royal chocolate cake. 
Also, if there are a couple things you're having a hard time deciding between, talk to your hostess or your server. They will have good recommendations and can also guide you on portion size because I'm not going to lie. I have definitely been known to order multiple appetizers and desserts because I couldn't decide between them and wanted to try them both. And so they were able to tell me, oh, you only get a little bit of that. So give it a try for sure. Also, if you have dietary requirements, let Royal Caribbean know ahead of time, at least 45 days before you're sailing, but preferably 90 days before you're sailing. They can accommodate food allergies, gluten-free, low-fat, low-sodium. They're really good about making sure you've got options and have a great dinner. Overall, we were really happy with the selection and quality food that we had, and we enjoyed it every time we went. My favorites in the main dining room was for sure the French onion soup. They had that every night. There was one night where we had a late lunch, so I decided to have it as my main. Another standout for me was the chicken parmesan, and we didn't feel like the pasta, so our server recommended substituting for a baked potato, and we really enjoyed it, and it hit the spot. Oh my gosh, Aaron, you really did like that French onion soup. I think there was one sailing that every time we were in the MDR, you ordered that. The, and I have to say, the food was really good. We enjoyed what we had there. So on to the dress code. We get asked a lot of questions about that and what to expect. So there are a few things that will affect the dress code, including the time of day, where you're sailing, and if it's a formal night. During breakfast and lunch, it's pretty casual as most people are dressed to start their days and the adventures that they're going to have. During the day, it's called casual. So, you know, shorts, t-shirt, but swimwear is to stay on the pool deck. For dinners on the website, it says that the attire is supposed to be smart casual, which includes long pants and collared shirts for men. When we were on our sailing, we actually called because Aaron had a situation on NCL where he had to go back to the room to change out of his shorts into long pants. And it it takes a long time on these large ships to do that. So as I said, we called and they did say long pants were required. However, it was definitely not enforced. There were people wearing gym attire like sports shorts and t-shirts. So if you are a guy and you're not sure, I would recommend packing a pair or two of long pants just in case they are enforcing it on your cruise. We were doing a Caribbean cruise, so that may have been why it was a little bit more laid back. For women, sundresses are nice and easy. Um, So are casual shorts and blouses. So those are good to to have. I also like to throw in one pair of nice sandals in my suitcase that I can wear every night for dinner on the formal and casual night so I'm not having to overpack multiple pairs of shoes. The amount of formal nights you'll have will depend on the length of your cruise. On formal nights, the dress code is expected for all dining rooms but the buffet. It is black tie, so suits and cocktail dresses or evening gowns. However, we did notice that there are a lot more men wearing longer pants and either just a polo shirt or a dress shirt. There were some people who did go full out with the full suits or even a tuxedo, but we didn't have the space for that. And if you don't have the packing space for a jacket, then it's all good. Long pants and a dress shirt and maybe even a tie goes a long way. I would say the main thing to remember for the dress code is to avoid swimwear, tank tops and bare feet. We wanted to share a few MDR tips with y'all. If you have traditional dining and are either the early or late seating, you'll want to make sure that you are relatively on time. There isn't a lot of time for each seating and it forces your waiter to rush and you might not have as nice of an experience. If you have selected my time dining, then we'd recommend trying to book a reservation. This helps you prevent long waits. You could do that before you sail on the first day of your trip or call in the morning and see if they have a time that's available. If you have a favorite wine at home and you want to bring it, each stateroom is permitted two bottles of wine. You can bring them to the main dining room and the waiter will open them and serve it for you. There will be a small corkage fee applied, but it's much cheaper than a bottle of wine on board and you know that you like it. If you're a late night snacker or didn't have space to try the dessert you wanted to try, you can ask your waiter to wrap it up and have the food to go to enjoy later. We also often get asked what drinks are included in the MDR water, tea, regular coffee, and at breakfast, some juices are included. Most drinks, including pop, specialty coffees, and alcoholic drinks cost extra. If you have a drink or soda package, you can use it in the main dining room. One thing that you can get in the main dining room is lemonade, and that lemonade is much better than the flavored water lemonade in the machines. 
So that was what I usually have when we were there. Overall, on our Royal Caribbean cruises, we have really enjoyed the main dining room. The selection of food was great, and our servers were amazing at making recommendations and substitutions. You can really then make the experience whatever you want it to be. Do you want to have a more traditional dining experience with a set dining time and meet some new table mates, or would you rather the flexibility of my time dining? The dress code is flexible enough that you do not require bringing extra suitcases, and we enjoyed participating in the formal nights. Have you ever sailed with Royal Caribbean before? What do you think of the MDR? Do you dress up for formal nights? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing your thoughts and experiences. Thanks so much for watching, and happy travels.